Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the To The Point Podcast. Guys are all doing well. And yesterday, Tuesday, we normally record the Breaking Bad podcast, and we did not because of me. It was my fault, uh, like most things in life. It was my fault. And I'm not just saying that to be facetious. I'm saying that because I'm accident prone. And yesterday, I, mean, I can only describe it as I was getting old yesterday. You know, I'm 23, I think. You know, I try to stay in shape. I, I'm trying to, you know, be active and, you know, get the necessary rest. But get home from work yesterday, sit on the couch for a minute. My little puppy Dirk jumps on me. She needs to be warmed up. And what happened? I, I, f- I fell asleep. Like, it's just, it's a shameful act. Seamus is waiting by the computer at the ready. And I, I failed him. I failed all of you. And all I can say is I hope to be better. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let it beat me. But you know, prayers up, and uh, you know, just uh, Shay. Uh, like I said before, I apologize, and I'm gonna try not to let this you know my body can, fail me again. Yeah, I can speak for a lot of probably our listeners. Uh, I I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, we all we all have hiccups. Uh, the main thing is just get back on track, and you know, here we are. It's important next couple of weeks because. Uh, Obviously, we're coming to the end uh, of, a, yeah. of a great, uh, not a, not just great season, a uh, great show. So, yeah, it, look forward to talking about it today. But, uh, no, it, it, you know, all the old guys, they get home from work sometimes, Juggy, and they just crash. They crash until, you know, it's time for supper or, you know, time to go do something else. But it, it happens. There's one thing I wanted to bring up, I guess. Uh, yesterday was a special day because it was the 20, it was the last 21st day of uh, the 21st year no sorry the 21st oh geez i'm messing this up already it's the last 21st day of the last oh geez 21st decade of the last 21st century that or the last 21st day of the last 24 year of the last 21st century that's it there we go I'm okay on track now. okay so but we didn't get to say that yesterday so i thought that's it today oh yeah it's basically just- it's the 20 every day is interchangeable you know it's just <laughs> 20 seconds yeah, i just thought that one was interesting no it is yeah no i never really thought about it that way so yeah uh hopefully we're around come the 22nd century and we're alive and well this 100 years old just falling asleep on random days that, that would be, you, that'd you be might be story. Yeah, you, you might be. If anyone defines the odds, it's you uh, running 30, 40,000 steps a day. But who uh, knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, that the oldest person ever lived chain smoke for 100 years. So, yeah, I, you see knows? that sometimes. They're just, <laughs> they, you know, you watch like John Daly, he'll be 112. Yeah. And he dies, just big boiler and just packing a heater at the PNC this past weekend. <laughs> um, before we start, I wanted to ask you because. I put my foot in my mouth a lot. And it's, I, it's honestly, it's been hard to talk to podcast because it's everything's about COVID right now. And it's really mm-hmm. pressing for me, but I pitched on Monday that the NFL, they continue to test if they want, but if a player tests positive and they are asymptomatic, they should be able to play that following week. Okay. I heard from some people didn't love it. Um, but the NHL, I have my doubts that they'll ever adopt that because I'm not going to go into that, but nevertheless, what do you think of my proposal? And do you think that it has any merit for, for them to adopt the same strategy? Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. So yeah, if you basically you test positive, you don't have any symptoms, no cough, no nothing, you can play the next game, then, you know, the next weekend, what have you. I, I think it's true. I mean, you think of, I, I, I think look back to the Stevie Y interview where yeah. he, he said that and he made it pretty clear that the players are still willing to play because they don't have any symptoms and because they're not sick. Like they just kind of want to get this over with. So I agree in that sense. Now you do have to think of like public, public health and public safety, but mm-hmm. I think it comes down to you know, the ethics of the player, you know, if that player goes out and, you know, parties his ass off, say he's in Vegas and he wants to go to the Rippers or, you know, he's going to go gamble a little bit. Well, that does look bad, I guess, on the league and obviously the team more importantly. But if that player is really a team player, then there, sh- there shouldn't be really a problem with any, with any of that, to be honest. 
And I think at the end of the day, when you're grinding in a team atmosphere like that, then it doesn't really matter uh, about going out or doing anything like that. It's for the team. You know, if, oh, if I have to stay in with my family or I have to stay in on the road, well, that's more important than, uh, than in, in keeping progressing with the season going than stopping it completely, right? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, if, you, if you're careful and, like you said, you go to the rink to your home, say, until you test negative, then I don't think there's an issue. And then there's not, you know, then you don't have Nick Mullins playing at quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. And you don't have Garrett Gilbert playing at quarterback for the Washington football team. Then maybe you don't have the whole NHL shut down for to be determined. And, you know, it's supposed to come back the 27th. I have my doubts. It'll be back the 27th, especially in Canada. I, I can't see it happening because this country is different from the U S people could argue it's been better through COVID others myself would argue that it has not been as good through COVID. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that idea by you because I, I heard some, from some people, they liked it, some hated it. And uh, obviously I'm not the most, um, how do I word this, health conscious person in the world when it comes to overall safety. I'm selfish. I fully admit that. And, you know, I want to watch my sports and it sucks not have NHL on, you know, Every night, tonight, yeah. tomorrow night, and you know, for I'm I'm thinking longer than they're saying right now. Yeah, I mean, with with like an abundance of testing, and you know, obviously a lot of self sacrifice coming from staffing. You know, all all staffing training. You know, uh, mm -hmm. people who work at the arena, all all of those, mm -hmm. and of course, coaching. If if everyone could do it, I mean, it, I don't see why it would be that big of a problem. I get people want to live their lives outside of their sport, um, but I, I really don't see him being an issue. And let's be honest, the NFL is still making tons of money on things like revenue tickets and, you know, adver advertisement, mm -hmm. uh, obviously TV deals. So if, if, if it's, it's paying out for them. Um, but yeah, the logistics I know of this, this variant is not supposed to be super harmful. That's what I keep hearing on the news and through media. But, you know, what, what do I know? I, I'm just an accountant. Yeah, and I'm just a podcast guy, but, uh, you know, that's – Baker Mayfield could have played on Monday if, uh, if they had adopted that plan earlier, but he couldn't, and see, see what the happens. season's done. Yeah. And they're done. Yeah, they got, the, they got the Packers on Christmas. I yeah. don't suspect that would be a close game. They'll get molly whopped, and we'll move on from there. But Breaking Bad, last week we really, you know – we. Hank has known about Walt's plans for a number of weeks, and he's been trying to figure out how he can take Walt down. And he set some roadblocks because he has no real concrete evidence. Walt created the tape that incriminated Hank, saying that he forced him to do it because of his cancer. So he's been hitting some roadblocks, but he did find an answer in one Jesse Pinkman. He convinced Jesse to not burn down Walter's home, but instead be a, you know, a CI, a confidential informant, so to speak, for Hank to, uh, to take Walt down. And we ended Shay with them meeting in the park. They were supposed to, you know, meet, talk about things, but Jesse didn't go meet him thinking that it was a, you know, he was going to get killed possibly at this meet and told Hank to close last week's episode that he had a better idea. Yeah, but that doesn't turn out like quite like we think. But yeah, uh, yeah you're right. Yeah, I mean, we, we we leave a lot of, you know, on, on last week, we leave a lot of openness because obviously, you know, what is Jesse's big plan to take down Walter? And then obviously Walter's phone call to Todd, who we get into in the beginning of this episode. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what what does that mean, right? Well, you know, he's he basically saying, okay, I'm going to hit out on Jesse before he does something to me that's going to harm me or my family, so... Yeah, it's it's it really leaves a, a lot lot to be desired for in this episode, and yeah, I think you'll agree with me, Joey. These are two of the, the darkest episodes of the whole show, and you know perhaps maybe even the darkest episodes, and also just some like really gripping scenes and you know a lot a lot going on. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get right into it. Yeah, it's tough. It's some of these scenes are really hard to get through because you, you you get emotionally tied to characters and it doesn't go well for a lot of the ones that you you like. So, yeah. So like you said, it starts 
with we see Todd is cooking his first, really his first batch at the new lab with his uncle Jack. Uh, Lydia's there and Kenny kind of Jack's right hand man. And it's 76% pure, which, you know, by Heisenberg standards is pathetic. But for a rookie chemist, you know, very, very, uh, you know, a green chemist, it's pretty good. But Lydia, the perfectionist, uh, is not happy because the product is not blue. It's not the Heisenberg blue. And that's vital for her check buyers. And, you know, Todd basically has to admit that he screwed up uh, when he was cooking so that he, you know, the product ultimately did not end up being blue. Yeah. Yeah. They have this conversation and eventually, you know, Jack and Kenny kind of believe and what did you think of this you know you could call it intimate you could almost call it creepy move by you know Todd who kind of makes him starts to kind of make a move on Lydia Lydia's a good looking woman by any means but obviously that it seems like their relationship is purely business and yeah. no, no pleasure what's involved and he's like kind of got his arm around her he's like, oh, like I'm sorry I messed up the cook like I'll do better for you and Lydia's kind of like mm, okay I'm not, I'm not really having this I'm, I'm gonna leave yeah, it was definitely he got friend zoned. And yeah, yeah. Uh, as a person that's been friend zoned a lot in my life, uh, it was a, kind of a gripping moment for me. Kind of a, I'm, I'm only kidding. Well, not really kidding, but some, somewhat kidding facetiously. But no, you're right. She She's drinking a coffee and she even kind of, but she does like tap him on the shoulder because she's trying to be like, could you do that for me, dear? Like kind of like, you know, yeah. that that female friend that you know is not interested, but she's wants something. So she's still going to pretend to be sort of interested. Right. And he he grabs her coffee cup and it's her lipstick is on it. And we see this creepy scene where he's like takes a swig of it and he's like looking at her lipstick really fondly. So Todd clearly, I mean we've known this for a while. He's antisocial He's a, kind of a weirdo and he he's not all there mentally. No, no, not by any means. And, you know, he's a follower. It's he is, he's a follower to Walter. Obviously, he kind mm -hmm. of admires Walter. We find out he, uh, even more so in this episode or, or sorry, the next episode. But yeah, he's he, you're right. He's got some social cues that are off. Remember the spider when he killed uh, Drew Sharp and yeah. he, you know, even killing that. Drew, he did it so just matter of fact yeah exactly yeah and, you know so no oh, go ahead no so yeah they she kind of leaves and he, and he gets the call from walt and it's basically the conversation that ended episode 12 and you know well he's talking to him and he says I, I need your uncle jack and he goes okay well how much like what, what how many people like another jail and he goes no it's only one target it's jesse pinkman and we kind of see todd I wouldn't say he smiles, but, you know, Je we obviously know Jesse's disdain for Todd after killing Drew Sharp. I think we see a little bit that Todd is also not a huge fan of Jesse because he's quite, I think he's happy that Walt is eliminating the, the problem partner in, in their, in his view. Yeah. Well, he probably knows how good of a, a relationship Jesse and Walter have. So to hear that they're kind of split city makes a lot of sense for him to be excited, you know, Jesse was basically the one who called him out on being a dipshit for killing Drew Sharp. So it, it makes sense that he's, okay, I can finally get my revenge without being, you know, I guess any, any problems afterwards. Right. So yeah, they're, they're down. And so they, they know the targets, Jesse, and we will get to that in a minute. We pivot to Hank and he's parked underneath an overpass and Gomi is, is there another vehicle? And they're basically saying like, what's this, dumb meth head doing that he was we had him right there and hank's like just just let him talk to you. he's got a, he's got an idea and goes like oh okay what's this idiot's plan so they walk to the door and jesse does have a plan he says you know i know we have to find a way to really destroy this guy and the only way we're going to get the evidence is to hurt him is where it, where he where it really hurts that you know he's gonna he's gonna open up, and he goes, "Well, what do you mean?" And he says, "We gotta hit him in his money. That's that's what he's doing all this for. That's what's important to Walter." Yeah, and he makes a good point too. The only real evidence 
Walter ever kept, you know, maybe besides Saul and no, in his knowledge, right, is his money. That's that you know, we think about the lab for Gustavo, he destroyed oh, wow. that, yeah, and anything else that could be tied back to him is basically ruined now or you know, not in his possession. So, really, the, the money is the only thing that really ties it back to this drug empire that he's made, right? And yeah, I, I it's it, it's super interesting. Um, and we see that so Hank's like, well, how are we going to do that? And Jesse goes, well, I know somebody that would have a knowledge of where his money is, or at least can put us in the right direction. And he says, Saul's guys, Huel and QB. So we learn that the DEA has arrested Huel Babineau. They put him in a safe house and we see this elaborate scheme from Hank Jesse and Gomi to get Huel to rat on his employer. Yeah, so Hal, Hank is in his house and he just kind of drops his big piece of meat and then starts putting the blood over it. And you're thinking, you're thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? And he says, okay, Pinkman, it's it's up to you. And the next scene cuts over and he's in this hotel room and they got, they've got one loyal guy who is in the DEA. He's not going to ask any questions, but he's willing to look over Huel like he's some kind of informant. And they start grilling Huel for basically saying, like, listen, we know that, you know, the jig's up with Walter. We know, we know all about him. And we got to find out where his money is. And, you know, for old Huel Babineau, he, he doesn't give them much. He's pretty tight-lipped at first until he's shown a very disturbing picture. Yeah, so like you said, they drop this big pile of beef and they put it all over the floor, the, the bread everywhere. And basically, it looks like brains. So Jesse got on the floor, <laughs> laid down, and it looks like he got his head blown off. And he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and he's, Jesus. And he's, Mr. White did that to him? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And your, your pal QB, he's missing. We don't know what happened to him. Maybe Saul's got him. Maybe Walt got to him. We don't know. He goes, oh, God. He says, you know, okay, this is this all I know. He, you know, he, we, me and QB, we went to the storage unit. We, we got all his money. We put them in these big barrels. And Hank's like, well, what, what do you mean barrels? He goes, it's like, you know. Eight by 10, big barrels, seven of them, full of money. And he said, we just drove them. And then we went and took the van and cleaned it after. And this is the kind of thing he goes, what do you mean cleaned it? And Hanks, and he was like, it was dirty. It had dirt all over it. You know, it was, compl- it was filthy as can be. And that kind of pencils them in. They're saying, okay, he's got it buried somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, really, even though he doesn't give them a ton, you know, Hank is such a great detective slash, you could say, officer that mm-hmm. he knows he knows enough about him to get this, to get the wheels going. Um, and they kind of take Huel's phone, you know, basically saying, oh, it's being tracked. Huel, Huel's a big guy, but you get the sense that he's not super intelligent. He's a great yeah. pickpocket. We've learned that in time and time yeah. after then. <laughs> but he's not the smartest guy, maybe when it comes to, you know, just street knowledge. And he's and Hank kind of says, "Oh, like don't you know? Don't use your phone, basically. So, not don't warn, using it so he won't warn Saul about what just happened. Right. And he's like, "Oh, you stay here. You know, if you, we can keep you safe. You know, you're not arrested, but you know, we can keep, keep you safe here if you want." Edging him on that, you know, he could be the next target to uh, a crazed Heisenberg. Yeah. So he was just kind of sitting there, <laughs> looking at the phone. He goes, no, "The battery's out of it. You're okay. You know." We got a good officer out there. You stay here. So they they have some dirt on him for sure, uh, pun intended. Uh, and we pivot to Walter. He goes to meet with Jack and Kenny and the uh, you know Nazi crew. And basically, Walt for the first time says, "Yeah, I want to." He admits, I, "I have to kill Jesse. Like I don't want to, but he's he's a problem." I want it quick and painless. And he even says, Jesse is like family to me. And, you know, the, the guys are like, you want to, we should probably make him suffer like a little bit. And they're like, no, 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 no. Bullet to the back of the head, you know, execution style. Just, just make it quick. I don't want him to suffer. And, um, you know, Jesse, uh, Walt says, how much money? And uh, Shay, uh, J- Jack is not interested 
in money. He wants help in the meth business. Yeah, he says, no, you, you, you're not going to drop a dime for this killing, but you are going to help my, you know, my dearest nephew, Todd, uh, start cooking better. Because essentially their whole, their whole foundation for their business is they got to get this blue coloring back into their meth or else they're going to lose their, they're probably going to lose cash from it because people are going to not take it seriously. And they're also going to lose their Czech Republic, um, we'll say customers. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, well, how can I use this to my advantage? And well, right away, Walter's like, no, like I'm, I'm out of the business. You know, I, I have no interest in doing this. And Jack's like, well, okay, but I'm, I'm not killing, I'm not killing Pinkman if we can't get, uh, if we can't get you back. And Walter d- definitely thinks about this for a while because obviously he is, like we said, out of the business. But he does, you know, he does say, okay, I'll do one cook, one final cook after the job is done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and they shake hands, they agree to it, and you know they don't know where Jesse is. They, they can't find him. Nobody can find him. But Walt says, okay, I can help you out with that. I have a way of luring him out. And this is low another j- just Walter low of the low. He, yeah. he decides to go visit Andrea and Brock, a.k.a. Jesse's ex-girlfriend and Brock, who I think he loves like a son. And as we know, Walter has already poisoned young Brock. And he... The fact that he goes there is just so disgusting, but he says, Andrea, me and Jesse, we, uh, we got in an argument and uh, he's not returning my calls. I'm worried that you know, he's using again. And uh, I just, I thought maybe if you could call him and you, know, you, you talk to him, maybe he'd get back to you. And at least I know where he is and know that he's safe. And of course she obliges because she is concerned about Jesse's well-being too. Yeah. So she calls it. You got you to admit every time you see a- a- afterwards, um, every time you see Walter and Brock's um, yeah. interactions, it's just so disturbing. It's like, oh, yeah. you tried to kill this kid or at least you, you, you had some intention of You gambled. Him. Yeah, you definitely gambled on his life and, Mm -hmm. you know, you're lucky it paid off, but still, and you're right, you know, what, you know, yeah, so Andrea, she calls him and we know that Jesse doesn't have his phone, this Hello Kitty phone that, you know, just Saul gave him, and it's actually um, Hank who ends up picking it up and, you know, we get this funny scene where he's like, ah, yeah, good try, you son of a bitch. Yeah. (laughs) And Hank's not going to share. Hank obviously is not going to share this information with no. Jesse because that'll basically send Jesse running into Walter's trap. So it's kind of looking good in the sense that Walter's, you know, or hey, Jesse's not going to just kind of walk Walter right into his own death. Walter gets out of the house, kind of gives the the nod to a car in front of Jesse's house, or sorry, Andrea's house, and we, you know. We can almost, it's Kenny and another one of Jack's goons, and they're kind of just sitting there waiting basically for, for Jesse to come through. Right. So, yeah, they, they're outside, and yeah, funny, he's this nice try, asshole. And uh, <laughs> Hank, yeah, he's, again, a good cop. He knew not to leave that phone with Jesse because that was only going to be problematic. Right. Um, Saul. Saul's still in the mix here, but he's, you know, he's at – He's at the car wash. He comes to the car wash and we see Junior. He's like, you're the, you're the guy from the commercials. And he goes, yeah, better call Saul. And Saul's been beat to hell by Jesse. She goes, what happened to you? And he goes, oh, you know, if you need a lawyer, kid, call me. Uh, and, you know, we they meet and he says, you know, Huel's MIA. I can't reach him. I can't get a hold of him. And then Walt sees, like, he asks him, are you wearing a bulletproof vest? And he goes, well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Jesse killed him. I'd be next. I'm, I'm the damn lawyer here. So this, you know, this does send up a red flag. Um, and following this conversation, Walt is sent a text of a, sent a photo of a barrel full of money. Yeah, yeah. I guess er- earlier in this, there are, uh, it's a conversation after, you know, after Hank basically says, nice try, asshole. They got in there and they're like, well, we have no leads. 
because we the van that was supposedly supposed to have a tracker on it doesn't have a tracker anymore because of you know whatever and jesse kind of this is another one of great team where jesse goes well he doesn't know that he doesn't know that there's that there was no tracker in there so they deploy a scheme and basically what they do is they make it seem like they're they're that they've got uh, walter's money and Walter goes into a frantic when he's at the uh, the car wash and basically runs out, grabs into his car. Usually Walter is kind of casual around the car wash, not trying to you know, alert anybody or alert his family that something's wrong. You know something's wrong when he bolts out of the car wash, gets into his car and takes off for his money. Right. So he gets a call from Jesse and it says, I, I, I'm, I'm here. I got your money. And I got seven barrels here and you know, every minute that you're not here, I'm burning 10 grand. And they basically the whole time, Jesse, you know, Walter's going as fast as he possibly can speed and telling Jesse to calm down. Don't do it. You know, stop. And, you know, Walt, uh, Jesse's saying things like you, you tried to kill Brock, you son of a bitch. And you were never, you were never like family to me. You, you killed Mike. He's basically telling him everything he's done bad in his life. And Walter's just like, no, please, Jesse, please. Like, no, no, no. And while he's just pulling into the desert, he loses touch with Jesse. And Jesse just basically goes, you know, fuck it. I'm about to start a bonfire here. And Walt basically just speeds, speed, speeds until he gets to the location. And Jesse is nowhere to be found. Yeah, he's kind of like looking around. He's like, what the hell? And, you know, he's, he's basically on top of his money at this point. And mm -hmm. he's like, okay, well, what the hell is going on here? And then I think it finally clicks in. Or is it after he goes up top and sees that the car is coming? I, I think he kind of, I think he kind of figures it out before. Cause then he runs to the top of that mountain and he's like, oh, no, like they got me. Like they, the, the, Jesse tricked me. Like he pulled one over on me. You know, the kid yeah. that I didn't think was capable of being smarter than me just outsmarted me. Yeah. We also have to take in context here, Dougie, that as of right now, uh, Walter thinks Jesse is work, working purely alone and has right. no idea of yeah. the connection with Hank and Jesse. So th this is interesting and obviously plays into a huge factor into the end of this episode and the beginning of the next um because right now it just seems like jesse's kind of got you know jesse's basically and, yeah and he's coming to get him uh you know and so he sees you know he sees the car and he's like fuck like he really doesn't have time it's not like he can just drive away or anything like that that's that's not going to work so walter he kind of gets down off this little cliff slash mountain and goes behind a bolter and he makes a phone call juggy yeah he He's kind of sitting there and he's looking. He doesn't know who's coming yet. And he says, he calls Jack and he goes, I need you. I need you. And they're, just to give you some context, when these guys say they're coming, they are loading up like they're going to World War V. They are getting the semi-automatics. They're getting shotguns. They're getting pistols, putting bulletproof vests on. These guys are the real deal. And he goes, I can't, I, this is where I am. Mark it down. It's, uh, you know, latitude, longitude, it's coordinates. So he gives it to Jack, but then he looks in the distance, oh, just sitting on the boulder, kind of his eyes looking, and he realizes that it's Hank's vehicle. He sees Hank and Gomez, and he kind of, for the first time, admits defeat. Like, he, he just sits there and goes, <sighs> kind of, they got me. And he says to Jack, don't come and he calls it off jack's like what, what what do you mean walter like where are you we're, we're coming he goes no don't don't come it, it's yeah. over and the phone call ends and he kind of just sits there with with the gun in his hand yeah yeah it's a scene where you know they're basically you know hank hank and gomi are just basically sitting on the side of his car and they're looking around they look in the car he's not nowhere to be found and Walter's behind this boulder and they start just yelling out. They're like, Walter, it's over. like, no, it's over. Like, just, just give yourself up. Like we, we basically gotcha. And, you know, Walter, Walter's really kind of just 
sitting there for quite a while. I think he's contemplating. Well, what do you, what about you, Jogi? What do you think his mindset's going through this? Like, is there a way he can get out of this? And pretty sure he's analyzing if there's any anything he can do. I'm sure. I'm sure he kind of pondered killing himself too, because mm. if he kills himself and they find the money, you can't prove that it's his. I guess in a way, like it wouldn't. Plus, like you're gonna go to prison. Your family's gonna learn that you were this terrible person. Uh, you know, it's. I think I think he pondered everything, but I do not think he thought he had an out. I mean, like you said, he he could have ran before they got there. He chose not to. He stayed there, and basic. I think he thought, "Am I gonna kill myself or am I gonna give myself into my mother-in-law?" Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, finally. Hank says, okay, I got him in sight. Walter gets out from the boulder, drops his gun, and you know, slowly makes his way over to uh to our to our three friends. Yeah, and like I said, he walks over, they make him turn around, and they eventually cuff him. And you know, he's kind of sit there. Hank is so excited. Like he's just like, yeah, we got him, you know, like finally, this son of a bitch. And you know, like you got, like you said, they say it's off and they, he gets on his knees, they lace him up and he, he's just the whole time that, you know, Hank asked Gomi, like, do you want to do it? And he goes, no, 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 this is yours, man. Yeah. And Hank starts reading him his Miranda rights. And he says, anything can, obviously can he use against the law and a court of law. And he, st- he stares at Jesse the entire time, and just a death stare at him. Yeah. Jesse's kind of giving it back to him. He's right in the limelight. And he said, he just looks at Jesse and he says, coward. And Jesse walks over and spits in his face. The most disrespectful thing you can do to another human being. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of have this funny exchange where they go at it. They, they get separated. And, you know, after that, they, they got basically, they basically have Walter in the back of the vehicle and Hank gives Marie a call and basically says, you know, we, we got him in cuffs. We, you know, we got him. You know, that this is over. And he's like, he goes, this is gonna be a rough next few weeks, you know, maybe a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after that, you know, it's 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 gonna get better and you know, things things will basically return to normal. Um, and at this point in the show, I mean, you're thinking, okay, this this is over, you know. Uh, he he's dead to rights, you know what yeah. I mean? There's nothing, nothing he can do to save him now. Um but there's this funny, funniest thing that Jesse said in a couple episodes ago. It's like, he, even if he doesn't have it planned, he somehow gets lucky. Uh, right. And uh, he, he sparks a little bit of luck or unlucky, if you will, if you will, in this uh, next scene. Yeah, this was such a, after knowing what happens, this is such a t- uh, heart wrenching scene because Marie, so proud of Hank says, you did it. Like you did it, Hank. And he can finally be like, I did. Like I got him. Like after all of this, people said I was wrong. I was stupid and I nearly died and I, I couldn't walk for a period, of, but I, I did it. I was right this whole time. And so she says, uh, he tells her I won't be home uh, for a while, but she says, you know, they both say that they love each other. It's this really touching scene. They move Jesse over to Walt's vehicle because uh, Gomi's going to drive that one back into town. They shake hands. But then in the distance, we see a couple, a a, a truck, and then a van start coming up to the scene. And it's not Hank's perspective or Gomi's perspective that we get from this. It's Walter in the backseat of Hank's vehicle because he is staring and he knows who's coming. And he's like, no, 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 no. And he starts yelling, Hank, Hank, no. And Hank's like, who? who is this? And even then he starts yelling, Jack, no, don't do it. And the second they stop the vehicles, they pull out all their weapons. And there's at least seven, ten eight guys, probably. Yeah, yeah. Ten guys, probably all armed. And, you know, Hank begins to yell at them. Uh, but Jack and the crew basically say, Hey, this is private. This is private land. You drew, we have all our rights to bear arms and we have no proof that you're cops. Anyway, show us some, uh, show us some ID. Yeah, very, very tense scene where, you know, Jet basically 
Gomi has what? Maybe a pump shotgun and yeah. tank uh, a revolver. And these guys are bearing like shotguns slash automatic, automatic weapons. Weapon. Yeah, handguns. And, you know, it's this tense basically thing where it's like, okay, you basically know someone's going to shoot first and they go back and forth, back and forth between Jack and Hank, Gomi. And, and finally, Walter's screaming the entire time. Yeah, Walter's basically saying like, Jack, it's off, it's off. And, you know, at this point, Jack doesn't, I don't really think he cares about what's going on. He just sees Walter in the back of a cop car with mm -hmm. his hands cuffed. And let's be honest, uh, Jack's done a lot for Walter and a lot of things he can go away for. Let's be, he, you know, mm -hmm. he set up the murders uh, and he's basically running the, the meth empire now in, right. New Mex in, in New Mexico. So he, you don't want DEA showing up at your house. Yeah, yeah, you don't, and more importantly, you don't want to see a guy you're affiliated with go away like that because obviously it's going to, it'll blow back on you regardless. Right. So it's a scene where Walt is yelling, Jack, don't do it, don't do it. And we see Kenny and Jack kind of make eye contact, and Jack kind of gives him a little, and Kenny just starts firing. And it's basically a fire sale. We, the end of the episode is just, peppering with bullets loud sound after sound after sound gomi and and uh hank rush to get behind the vehicle we don't see anybody die or anything but it's just a flurry of bullets that kind of cap off this episode yeah can you imagine the when this aired for the first time Jackie, thinking what the hell is gonna happen i know like like you, you'd be watching this and waiting a week like everyone yeah. does and thinking Oh, like this, this like it, it, it's a it's a huge shootout scene but in the same sense nothing happens we don't see any bodies drop so you know who who wins or who loses and it'd be it'd be crazy to think about for a whole weekend at least now i know i, I would but oh yeah you gotta be thinking like there's no way something bad's gonna happen <laughs> you know it's 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 just bound it's this show you know the good the good guys rarely win in the show so to speak yeah. um so that's how it ends. And, you know, in true Vince Gilligan fashion, we're not going to start the next episode off with the, with the fire sale because that's just not the way he rolls. <laughs> we start with their first cook. And it, it's this funny scene where they're in the RV bickering, which is what they all, Jesse and Walter are bickering over science and the, and the cleanliness of the lab. And it's kind of this scene where Walt goes to that same little cliff that little mountain that he was on and he, he gives Skylar a call and she's, she's pregnant at the time. And, you know, they, you know, he, he lies to her for the first time. Well, that we see uh, about, uh, you know, he has to stay at the car wash late. Bogdan's being a real prick about it, but it's this scene where they're still happy. You know, there's, she's not aware of what he's doing. She's still like, yeah, that's, that's fine. Like, you know, that's how I see like you pick up a pizza on the way home and it's kind of nostalgic because it's what their life was before all this came to be yeah yeah I like that they brought it right back to dead smack to the beginning of the show in the first episode because you know it's it's true like how look how far they've gotten from cooking in this crumply old man mm -hmm. um to you know everything that's happened in between so it's cool that they bring that back and because it's the first location so it really we're we're not changing locations we're only changing time uh in the right. sense that uh they did that and i think jesse even brings it up in the last episode he says oh this like this is where our first cook was basically why the why it was so symbolic uh of uh, walter to bury his money there yeah no it's and it kind of shows you something about walter picking that spot too because clearly it meant something to him that location yeah. um and yeah so she they kind of have this good exchange, tell each other they love each other. And then, of course, we go from this touching moment back to present day with, with bullets, bullets firing loudly. And they just suddenly stop. We just kind of we see sand at the beginning of the episode. We don't see them shoot really shooting each other. We see that Hank's car is shot to shit. The windows are broken. Walt's basically in the back seat, just like bare, you know, trying to avoid the bullets. And when we come back, we see Gomez and he's dead. 
on the ground. Yeah, he's he's sprawled out uh, where basically where he was standing when the shootout happened, and we pivot over to Hank, and you know he's he's not peaches either. He's got a basically a gun gun wound in his leg, and you know he checks he checks his own revolver. He's pretty much out, and at this point he starts crawling towards the the pump shotgun uh, Gomez had, and at this same point uh, Jack also kind of starts making his way over to the vehicle and making his way eventually over to Hank. Um, this whole time, Walter's kind of sprawled out in the back seat of uh, Hank's vehicle. And he's still handcuffed, so he's really in a bad spot because that's exactly where all the bullets were coming for. Mm-hmm. And before Hank can grab the shotgun, we see uh, Jack kind of slam, typical slams his boot down right on it, uh, not letting him pick it up. Right. So Jack grabs his wallet says he is DEA and Jack's about to kill him when Walter, you know, says, no, Jack, stop, stop. Like, no, he, he knows nothing. He won't say anything. He, he, you know, but Hank being Hank says, no, no, no. I know lots. And the Calvary's coming. You bet your ass on that. They're, they're coming in hot. And Walter's trying to, he goes, no, like he knows nothing. He is, but you know, Jack's like, you know, I, I got to kill him, Walter. Like I, he's a freaking DEA agent. He just saw me kill his buddy. Like, you don't think he's going to come find me in five minutes? Like, but Walter says, Jack, I have $80 million out here, which is quite the little proclamation from Walt clearly showing that he does still have some love for Hank in his heart here. Yeah, he, he wants too many things. He's kind of holding on to, he's trying to hold on to basically his life of crime, but at the same time, his family. And obviously we hear you see that, you know, juggling it all is going to cost him one or the other. So he's, you know, he's willing to give up everything he's done basically to save his brother-in-law and more importantly, you know, spare him. And, you know, they're like, oh, like $80 million and you no. Know, and he's like, yeah, well, how, you know, how am I, how am I supposed to know that this guy is not going to say anything and he's going to shut the hell up? And Walter keeps saying, Hank, like, please, like, please just like, you know, apply to like, just, just go along with it. You got to let this one go. And Hank looks Walter dead in the eyes and goes, not, not a chance, buddy. Yeah. And he even says like, you, if you don't kill him, you can have everything. But Hank is, and this is really one of the, uh, the famous quotes of the show. It's one I remember yeah. anyway. He goes, Walter, you're the smartest guy I've ever met. But you're too damn dumb to see that Jack made up his mind 10 minutes ago. Meaning it doesn't matter that you have 80 million out here. It doesn't matter that you might, he, you might be his employer at this time. But I'm a DA agent. He's a criminal. I'm done. There's no way I'm walking out of here alive. And as he's done saying this, Hank says, and my name's Asak Schrader, you piece of shit, and go fuck yourself. And before Wall can interject, Jack shoots Hank in the temple. Moment of, moment of silence for our brother. Yeah. Tough, tough, tough scene. Um, I mean, end of a character, huge character on the show. I mean, we lost Gomi, we lose Hank here. And Hank was such a prevalent character. And it it's tough because he was such a, you know, he had his flaws, like all of us, but he was a good person. You know, he, he had his anger issues, like we all do. Uh, he had, was he, was he the greatest husband at times? No but are people like all the time? Like he was, he was just a human being, but he was really good at his job. And just to bring it all home, he was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to arrest a criminal and that's what he, that's his job. He's a cop. And for, you know, Walt kind of falls to the ground and is forced to kind of lay there for a while and stare at a lifeless Hank. Yeah, yeah, he's, you know, he's emotional, he's, you know, he's breaking out into tears, he's, you know, he just can't, he probably just can't even fathom what just happened in front of him, which, I mean, is to, to watch someone you're so close with 
uh, get shot would probably be that, that's anybody's reaction i think uh but yeah going, going to your point towards hank i think being a cop through and through was hank's you know role in this show and i think it was so important that you know he wasn't willing to turn the cheek not once not yeah. for his brother-in-law you know he didn't beg you know he never once begged for his life in this last scene he you know he stood through and you know he he knew what was coming basically yeah. and he accepted it which i think was so important one thing i you know i thought about deeply uh after this episode was if hank were ever like yeah he caught his guy finally you know he finally had him in his hands and it kind of washed away but if at any point he were to look the other way he, he probably would have been alive at that point because yeah. i mean he had no, no reason to be out in that desert if not right yeah and it, you know if he had told a couple more people maybe he isn't dead either you know yeah he, true he had to go through with it which i don't blame him because nobody believed him so i wouldn't want to include people and give them the credit of getting the arrest it's kind of like the ford versus ferrari movie i don't know if you've seen that one shay i have yeah but you know when um your buddy mcconaughey is uh is racing and they tell him no don't win you know let all the four drivers go together and he kind of asked he has to wait multiple laps for them to catch up and ultimately he doesn't even give credit at being first you know he, they they give it to another driver so th in this situation it's kind of like he he gets the arrest in his head but in reality he'll never get the credit because walter gets to escape yet again yeah yeah it's 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 a tough scene and you know just really shows like even though we know that they're cold-blooded killers and that they're obviously they're this kind of this fascist nazi group they you know this makes it feel even more real because they killed off someone who we were so attached to and who made so much to the show so you just see them kind of in a new light like they're not just employers anymore of walter they're they're kind of the enemy at this point and they're kind of like this savage group of people right yeah and they're in control now you know they yeah they have, essentially they have control because they kind of they kill hank and then they he basically tells the guys he uses the the uh the location attitude, yeah the location that walter gave him and he tells the guys start digging and yeah. kenny starts digging and they find one barrel and they continue and ultimately they load the uh the truck up with six barrels but he tells kenny no leave one like he gets one you know we we owe him that kind of thing and walter this whole time is laying on the ground still handcuffed so he has no control we don't know where Jesse is. They, they've, cert, they've sent out men to look for him. He's nowhere to be seen, but Walter is on the ground. So he does have a viewpoint of the ground, but he, and also through this, we see them drag Gomi and Hank's bodies to the pit that Walter put the money in. They just kind of throw them in there lifeless, which is not great either. Not a great way for, for Hank to go, obviously not, not to get the proper burial. Yeah, but, it's kind of symbolic, sim symbolic though, in the sense that w Walter's the one who d dug that technically. Yeah. So in a way, he kind of dug his grave, Hank's yeah. grave. Yeah, good which point. I didn't think about till right now, but I mean, it is. Yeah, no, good point. Yeah, I never thought about that either. So Jack does say to to Walt, like, "So are we cool here? Uh, like, uh, we're good, right? Like, tell me, shake my hand, and tell me that we're good, because otherwise, basically, I'm gonna have to kill you." yeah in the nicest way possible he says you know he, he basically says you know todd todd looks up to you you know he admires you and if he didn't like you'd be you'd be in the same position as your two buddies you know laying in that grave but you know Wal walter's not saying anything he's uncuffed at this point and he's not saying anything and he says you know he's like he's like shake my hand and walter you know very reluctantly kind of gives him uh, a small hank and as for, uh, jack's walking away he goes pinkman and he goes what he's like your, your job's not done you know you you owe me pinkman and you know jack duck's like well if we if we'll find him we'll get him and then walter says found him and yeah. points towards below the uh below his, his own car yeah and uh, jesse has been hiding there basically since the shootout uh making it seem like he ran away which he almost got away with if walter hadn't uh, outsed him yeah, basically it made a little pit for himself under the car so that you couldn't see him. But Walter was face down in the dirt the whole time. So he got a good view of it. 
So two guys drag Jesse out and he goes, no, 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 no. And he's trying to fight it. And, you know, Jack's about to kill him, but Todd comes over and he goes, you know, what, what if he knows, what if he told other DEA people? What if he has information? Like we gotta, we, we, we should get it out of him back at the house. And Jack's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you're right. And they say, you know, we, we're going to kill him, but we'll kill him at our, we just got to know what he knows. And Paul's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And as Jesse's basically crying, getting dragged to the, to the vehicle, he says, no, stop. And to add insult, this is another iconic little scene. He says, I watched Jane die, OD and choke and choke to death. I could have saved her, but I didn't. You think, do you think he said that because of his emotions at the time towards, you know, his, you know, obviously his grief towards just watching Hank die? Or do you think he said, do you think he would have said that either way? As a, like a fuck you to, to I kind of think he would have said it either way. Right. I, I, th I think he was just so angry that he went to the police and I'm sure in his, we know Walter doesn't like to blame himself. I'm sure he's rat rationalizing it being like, well, if it was just Jesse out here screwing with my money, Jack could have came, could have killed him. I'm okay. But he partnered with Hank. They came out here. He put Hank in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. So now he's going to die, but I want to make him really hurt before he dies. Yeah. Yeah. Rewatching that's like, uh, it's, you know, you, you, you don't, yeah. You think of, you think of how low and how pathetic, I guess you could say Walter is. And mm -hmm. to add that much injury or uh, insult to that much injury, just, yeah. you know, cause he knows, you know, these guys are going to take him away and die. Like, and so what, like he's, it's almost like he's getting it off his chest in the sense that, okay, well, you know, since I'll never see him again, well, I can, I could say it to his face and I'll feel better about it. Right. 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 Yeah. He says he, he's, he's, uh, he's got all his guilt is gone because he told him the truth, which is complete BS, but never yeah. that, that's in Walter's head. So they go away. They got Jesse in the back seat. We assume Jesse's going to be killed. Um, Walt still has his barrel. They put it in his car for him and, of course, like there are V days, there has to be an issue. He starts driving, but the car is out of gas very, very quickly into his, into his drive. And he was flying at this point because, you know, Hank's dead. He's got to figure some shit out here and get the hell out of town. But there's a, there's a bullet in his gas cap, completely out of gas. And he has to start rolling this gigantic barrel across the desert. <laughs> the shit they come up with um, yeah <laughs> it's, at, it's at the it's at this point that we revisit the gas station where you know junior's kind of learning learning the ropes of the uh, uh or the sorry the gas station the car wash where the juniors were learning the ropes and kind of getting familiar with you know handling with customers the register and all of a sudden uh marie walks in and she's just she just she's very calm and you know relaxed knowing what she knows, thinking that Walter has been captured and Hank's won, essentially. And she goes, oh, yeah, I just wanted to come see you. I've been doing some things, you know, this and that. And she goes, oh, Junior, you can take the take the register. Uh, Skylar, can I meet you in your office for a second? And yeah, that's I'll, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, so, yeah, Junior does his little have an A1 day. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> um, so basically Marie says, I just got a call from Hank and uh, Walt got arrested. If you haven't heard, he's, you know, dead to rights, I think is what the, uh, what the term is. And, you know, Hank's blocking him up right now. And you should know because obviously it's going to affect you. At this point, Walter kind of start, or sorry, uh, Skylar kind of starts crying uh, but Marie says, oh, there's something else you're going to do. And you're going to tell Junior. And Marie is like, no. Uh, so Scott was like, no, I'm not doing that. And, and Marie goes, yes, you are. Because he deserves the truth. And he should know about what kind of man his father is. And, they, you know, they kind of, she reluctantly agrees to tell Junior the truth. Yeah. What does she also, she also makes him or makes Skylar do something else. But I kind of, it's slipping away. Oh, she, she has to give back the tape 
about Hank. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. She says yeah. You, you're going to make all those disgusting tapes go away, basically. And, you know, she's she's definitely dominant in this situation. And, you know, she's kind of got Skyler by, by the nuts, you could say. Yeah. And, yeah, she's she's like, okay, this is what's going to happen. And bang, bang, bang. And that's, you know, exactly the way uh, it's going to go. So Walter has been rolling the barrel through the desert and he finally sees this old home and it's, it's, it's uh, owned by an Aboriginal man. And he, he's rolling it towards his fence and this guy comes out and he goes like, are you okay? And he goes like, how much for that truck? And it's this old, old, I'm talking like 1950s, 1960s Chevy. And it's, it's seen better days. And he goes, well, it's not for sale. And Walt pulls out, opens up a sleeve of his jacket, basically hands the guy ten to twenty thousand dollars, and uh, so yeah, n- now the truck's his. Yeah, now the truck's for sale. Um, yeah. so yeah, he, he you know gets his barrel and he makes his way, and he's he's basically headed home. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, we're we're cutting back to um, the car wash, and you know Skyler and Marie have just told. Walter Jr. basically that everything and he he doesn't believe them and he's he's like no like no that this isn't real this this isn't true like you guys are you guys are just making this up you guys are liars and he doesn't want to believe that his father's a, a you know a bad man let alone a criminal um, right. and you know that's you know that's kind of how that's that's been going and you know he's really calling his mother down to the lowest but you know this is a motion of you know either finding out that this could be true or his mother's just lying straight to his face right he's been lied to so much over the past couple months it's only fair for him to really challenge his mother's you know her story here and he doesn't believe it he wants to go home he wants to see walter you know they marie thinking yeah well, he's in lockup so whatever um so we go back to jesse and oh, is he in a tough spot? He's basically living in a hole. He's in this little, it's like, you know, it's like you're in lockup. It's like you're in the hole in, in prison because you're, it's just this little space and it's underground. Basically, it's, he's got this vent on top that he can't, you can't get out of, you can't scale the wall and really you can only get out with somebody helping you. So we see his face completely battered. He's been beat to hell, clearly. And Todd opens up the, takes the tarp off the top and he pulls Jesse up and he goes, no, like, stop. Like, I told you everything I know. Like, please. Todd goes, no, no, we know, we know. And he takes him to this little shop. And uh, basically we see that he's taking Jesse to the lab. Yeah. It's kind of like, what? Like, what? Is he going to get him to cook a couple more times or like, or is he? Like Je- Jesse, obviously, is, like you said, he's been battered. He, he's probably been beaten worse than he probably ever has. And if, yeah. if you've been following along, Jesse has been by far the most beat character out of all the show. Yeah. And, you know, all of a sudden, uh, Todd kind of hooks the back of him up to this. I don't, I don't know what you call it. I know there's a name for it, but basically this wire that he, he's yeah, not it's able like he's to. On a, it's like he's on a, a, he's attached to a carabiner to a zip line. So yeah, and he's not able to, it's not like he'd be just able to leave. It's got like this big heavy lock on the back of it. And he unhooks his chains and basically, you know, lets him go. And Jesse sees a picture uh, right beside, and it's a picture of Andrea and Brock. And, you know, he immediately just like scared shitless. And Todd behind him is kind of like, okay, you know, it's time to cook, basically saying, if you don't cook or do what we say, your little family is uh, going to die for real right. this time. Yeah. So basically he's a prisoner and it doesn't, you know, they told Walt that he, they were going to kill Jesse. From our knowledge, they have no plans at, of doing that anytime soon because the second best or potentially the first best meth cook in all of Albuquerque's history is in their possession and why use Todd when they have a guy that can make the blue stuff every day, you know, and basically he's, he's a war criminal at this point because he's, he's a prisoner and he can't, he can't get out. So yeah. tough, tough life for Jesse. And it doesn't get any easier over the last couple episodes here. 
So Walt, uh, we go and Skyler and Junior are driving home. No conversation. Really, really awkward. And she's like, can you, can you just put your seatbelt on? And I love this line from Junior. He just looks at her and he goes, are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah, of, really. of all the shit you've done, you're concerned about me wearing a seatbelt in the cul-de-sac? Like, fuck off. And as they're getting home, they say, they see this old beater of a truck where his, uh, where his challenger should be. And they're kind of like, what the hell is going on here? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. And they kind of walk in and Walt's already been packing for say 10 minutes. He's got most of their stuff packed up. He's in flight mode at this point. He's thinking, okay, we got to get in our car and we just, we got to leave for good. And, you know, they kind of walk in and, Right away, you know, uh, Walter Jr. basically goes, you know, what the hell is going on? Like, dad, like, well, why are you driving this beat truck? And why are you covered in dirt? Because he's filthy at this point. Yeah. And Walter is kind of re- refusing to answer any of the questions. And he's just like, you and your mother have to pack and we have to leave right away. No questions asked. Yeah. So he goes, just tell me something. Tell me something. But Skylar's frozen because she was told that Walt was in lockup, that he was arrested. And she's just kind of, and she goes, where's Hank? And Walt goes, I'll explain later. Like we, we just, we, we gotta move. We gotta go. Like, let's, let's go. And she just goes, where, where's Hank? And he goes, okay, I have, I have $11 million in cash with me right now. Okay. We can get out of here. We can start a new life, new IDs. We, you know, the world's our oyster. Let's go. Like, let's go. And she's just like, you killed Hank. Where is he? You killed him, didn't you? You killed him. And she starts to scream. And her and Junior both just start crying. And as he's kind of coming out of, out of, uh, out of as he kind of goes into Junior's room, still not acknowledging the accusation. And he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't say no either yeah. which i mean obviously for them they know that that's not a great sign so if he's if he's not denying it then it's a perfectly good reason to think that it could be true and at this point you know he he's still in a frantic mode trying to get them to pack and scholar kind of walks calmly over to the kitchen and it's a cool scene where it's a cool shot i should say where the phone is beside the the knife set the knife holders and for a second, you're thinking, well, mm-hmm. oh, she's going to go call the police. But quite the opposite. She grabs a knife and she gets Walter Jr. behind her. And he says, like, you have to leave. You have to get out now. And oh, Walter just, it, he just can't come to it. He just doesn't read the room. And right. he's like, what are you talking about? Like, this, this is my family. And he reaches through and she slashes him right on the wrist. Or not on the wrist, right in the hand yeah right in the palm of the hand and it's a big bread like it's a big bread knife like it's like if you're cutting a loaf of whole of homemade bread like a just out of the oven she she gives him a really a good slash like he said and he goes we're a family he screams at her and he basically just freaks out and they start wrestling you know fighting for position to get the knife on the ground junior at this point just kind of like mom dad like what what are you doing but as Walter is about to gain kind of the upper hand, Junior jumps on him, jumps on Walter, rolls him over, and he uh, uh, protects his mother, kind of puts his arm in front of her, goes like this, and starts and calls 911 saying that his fa- saying that Walter attacked Skyler. Yeah, pretty t- tough scene to watch because, I mean, obviously – you know how this is affecting Walter Jr. and how he views his father and, you know, perhaps his mother. And you're just thinking, ah, oh. and there's a scene where Walter looks at, you know, his son whole, basically protecting his mother and thinks, you know, he's got to be thinking, how did it come to this? Like, how, right. how did I let it get it this far that I, my family basically sees me as a, a, a criminal slash monster? Yeah. yeah. And it, Walter knows, like, if he stays while well, his that's over for him so he begins to start to leave but not before he takes holly and gets into his beater truck 
Yeah, so they're just kind of like sitting on the ground thinking, okay, he's leaving. Finally, we're, we're okay. Like you said, he grabs Holly out of the playpen and he hears she, oh, Skylar hears her cry a little bit. And she goes, no, 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 no. And she runs out the door. He's locked them. She's parked in front of his truck, but he backs the truck into her SUV out of the way and squeals off with Skylar running down the road, screaming at him to bring her daughter back to her. Yeah. And he's, he's gone. He's gone like the wind. It's, it's a pretty gripping scene because I mean, you're, well, you're seeing a, a, a child be forcefully taken from their mother yeah. and it's, it's a low point, but Walter, Walter is clearly salty at the fact that, you know, he can't have his whole family. So he's going to take a piece of it. Right. Holly doesn't have enough brain power to understand how bad of a person he is. So it's the one person that hasn't turned against him. So he's at a gas station, he's cleaning her diaper, but Holly starts to say mama about three to four times. And he's kind of like, oh, like I, I, I can't do this. Like she shouldn't be with me. Like it's not really. And, but he's got to figure out a way to use this advantageously. So we see Marie is now at the house. The police are there and they get a call. Uh, they don't answer the phone and it's Walter basically saying like, Skylar, I know you're home, pick up the damn phone. Like, and they put a wiretap on it and she starts talking to Walter. Yeah. Yeah. She's Walter is at this point, he's outraged. She's like, how could you do this? How could you betray me? You know? And he's like, look, look at, to, look what happened to those who've done this before. Like I, I could have gave you everything. And you know, Skylar, Skylar just asks, you know, you know, where's Hank? She says, where's Hank? And at this point, Marie gets out, out, out of her chair and it's kind of on, you know, on her high heels because she wants to know. And oh, Walter lays a pretty crushing blow and says, you'll never see Hank ever again. Yeah. And this was interesting, Shay, because he could have easily told the police where the body was, mm -hmm. you know? He could at least they could have went and dug it up and Hank could have got a proper burial. But I'm surprised, you know, I guess you could say there's no proof that he did it. Yeah. But I did find it a bit surprising that he didn't at least give Marie that sense that she could at least bury her husband the right way. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of things wrong with this individual. You know, it can continue, and this, you know, the, the, the phone call continues, and he's basically just calling her down to the lowest, like, you yeah. know, you, you bitch, like, how could you do this to me? You took my family away from me. And, you know, Skylar is, at this point, they're trying to trace the phone, so Skylar's trying to be, you know, cooperative and saying, like, you know, I'm sorry, like, I, you know, I, I'm really, really sorry for this. And Walter's still just belittering her down to basically the, the, the lowest of low form saying you know, how could you ever betray me like this but he's and also got an agenda because he he starts saying things like like why would you do this you didn't know anything about it like you didn't know about my money but you couldn't like he's trying basically to create a narrative with the police there in my mind that she did not know anything about it that she was yeah. kind of in the wind she's innocent and you know the kids were you know and he's pissed that how could you tell my son when you said suspicion no real proof basically trying to eliminate Skyler from potentially jail time or and, you know. and good for him. Cause he knows at this point that they've gone to the police and it's not yeah. like, cause at the beginning of the conversation, he goes, oh, is the police there? And she says, yeah. obviously she says no, but Walter being smarter than that's also, you know, he's like, okay, well, how can I use this phone call to my advantage? So he's, at least he's doing her a favor in the sense that even though he's belittling her, he's still clearing her name in the sense that she, you know, she, she doesn't have any suspicions, right? Or, right. or she had suspicions. She only had suspicions. I mean, yeah, yeah. She only had suspicions, no concrete evidence. So she did. She didn't have anything to do with this. Um, and Skylar finally says at the end, she just says, "I, I just want Holly back. Can you please come home?" And Walt says, "I still have things left to do." And he ends the call, and it's this really ominous, like, "Oh, uh oh, what does that mean?" But as he's making the call, he's outside a fire station and he brings Holly in, puts her in the passenger seat and turns on the lights. And this fireman comes out to find Holly sitting there with her address uh, attached yeah. to her. Yeah, he he clearly made 
you know, he's a bad guy, but he made a morally right decision in the sense that, you know, he can't just take his daughter from him. Because not only is that going to bring him a lot of heat, let's be honest, but mm-hmm. uh, I mean, like, what's he going to, like, was he going to take Holly forever and raise her as a, this abducted child? Right. You know? Like give give her back to the mother and let them move on with their life. Which is yeah, what let her want. try to have a normal childhood. The fact yeah. that she hasn't been scarred yet. Yeah. So you're thinking we have two episodes left of this show, and this episode's not done yet. But you're like, where are we going from here? Well, we see Walt waiting at the same location that Jesse was supposed to leave when when he called Saul's man, and we see Walt sitting there. The same van pulls up. But this time, Walt does what Jesse should have did. And he gets in the van and they start to drive off. Yeah. And I mean, this, we're adding things up here. We, we get the sense that this is his final departure until his return when right. you know, we see him at the, the beginning of the season where he's got his hair. He doesn't look like the normal Walter. And obviously, he's, he's planning something. He went to get the rice in. He got this big this big old army machine gun in the back of his trunk. So, I mean, you get a sense, but at the same sense, we don't know anything that's going to happen. We don't know what's, what's going to transpire from, from here on out right now. All we know is that Walter is kind of going off the map. And right. Yeah. I guess the only thing we really know concretely is that he, he has cancer and you can put two and two together that the cancer is getting worse because obviously how thin he is there and, you know, just how meek he, he looks, you can tell that it's clearly, having an effect on yeah. him but yeah you mentioned at the top just how emotional these up ep- it is these are tough episodes to get through because there's some you lose some important people i think this is the last episode for marie as well so marie's last episode hanks gomi's last episode so three characters that have been in it from jump uh it's their sign off from the breaking bad universe and um yeah it, it's especially the way the Hank uh, death, uh, no matter how many times you see it, it's still gripping. Yeah. still makes you feel something. Yeah. I think if you were to ask Dean Norris, who plays Hank, mm-hmm. you know, if he, if he would have wanted his character to go, go out of the show any other way, I'm sure he'd probably say, no, like that's, that's, that's how I wanted it to be. As a I, totally, I totally agree. Yeah. He went out his way. He didn't go weak. He didn't go, you know, he, he went out being Hank to a T and yeah i know i i completely agree and there's also this fun uh it's this youtube clip and you can actually see how they filmed this uh this scene in particular it's really interesting with, with all the weapons and uh you know the bullets flying everywhere so i recommend if anybody wants to see it you can go on youtube vince gilligan kind of narrates through it you get to hear from dean norris you get to hear from gomi uh, all the cast of characters about what they thought of the scene how they filmed it and you also get to see the cast and crew kind of clap for um, Dean Norris for his last scene on the show. Yeah, so something I'll probably check out right after this. I, I didn't know they did such a thing. Yeah, no, it's pretty it's pretty cool because they yeah they all you know, Dean and Vince kind of share a share a hug and a uh, fun fact: Dean Norris's son's middle name is Vince, uh, named after, after Vince Gilligan. Gilligan. Wow. There you go. Just this kind of shows how tight that I guess the cast and crew were on this yeah. throughout the making of this show. Because I'm sure I mean it spans over what Joe, like five, six years. Five, six years, yeah. And they, they won so many Emmys too. And you can see when when uh Aaron Paul won his first one, uh he was nominated in the same uh category as uh, Juan Carl Esposito, who played Gustavo Frank. And they share this really big hug, a really big embrace at the Emmys, and uh it's or Oscars, I mean, and it's, it's powerful. You can tell. And, you know, him and even uh, Anna Gunn has, I think has won two or three Oscars for her role as Skylar White. I mean, this, this show dominated. Uh, I mean, it's so good, but you know, you're right. When they won, they all won. You know, it was just, it was a sign of when they won an award, it was because, okay, it was a, it was a group effort that we ultimately, you know, won these individual achievements. Yeah. No. And I mean, here we are, this is the, this is we're, we're, we finished the the second part of it, and now we're we're on the last part of the uh, of five five seasons long um, podcast, I guess of yeah. Breaking Bad, and we're we're finally to the end. Uh, exciting last two episodes. 
yeah, next week we'll we'll tie a knot on it. Uh, and uh, we, yeah, like you said, two really great final episodes. We have to see what this mystery person does when he get when he takes somebody and you know, gets them a new life, so to speak. So we get to meet uh, that character played by the great Robert Forrester, uh, and uh, you know we get to see what happens with, with Jesse, who's stuck in a hole right now. So a lot lots happening. Uh, before that, it is. Christmas week, so to speak, Shay. Uh, I know you're winding down work. I uh, got a few things left in in the can, but you're you're gonna have a, a little bit of time off before you before your busy season. Um, any plans over Christmas with family? Any any kind of traditions that you particularly like uh, for for Christmas? Yeah, uh, you know, just just hanging out with my family. It'll be a very quiet Christmas due to, of course, everything going on. Your your favorite subject, mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, no, just if I could see some close friends and mostly just hang out with my family, that's uh, that's all about all, all I could really ask for. And uh, I, I was going to come home tonight, obviously, but uh, due to the weather, I'm going to postpone that till tomorrow morning. I guess the roads are pretty, pretty awful. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to look forward to that. But uh, getting some time off, like you said, I got a, got a couple things left on the docket, but getting a little break before we get super busy here. Um, uh, into into the new year is definitely something i'm looking forward to well yeah that's uh good for you uh take the take the time and uh, get some time off that'll be good sure, i'll be seeing uh, i'm sure i'll be seeing you quite a bit yeah especially if um if i uh, if i can't leave so yeah yeah i don't i'm sorry I, it's kind of a negative thing but seeing you before you departure is what we'll say because i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be the optimistic in this and say yeah that no I'll, I'll do i haven't I said this on the podcast yet. i did announce that i was going to uh edmonton but just for everybody that's listening not a guarantee yet obviously uh yesterday got dropped to 50 percent capacity whether uh sawyer and myself are in that 50 percent maybe tomorrow night is what i'm hearing so two days before the event starts, they'll let you know if you can go. Really, uh, really great event they got going there. Uh, but we'll wait and see. Uh, hope for the best right now. If not, I will rage watch on my couch. And I uh, just got to, if that happens, they canceled one bowl game in college football today. If there's more, God help me. Uh, but uh, you know what? We'll enjoy it. Christmas, all that. Santa, cookies, bunnies, whatever else. Um, but Shay, it's always a pleasure. We'll do this again next week, but Merry Christmas, my friend, and uh, happy holidays to you and yours. Yes, Merry Christmas to all the listeners out there listening to or watching along with us. Uh, pre appreciate the support if you're if you're listening on and uh, can't wait to, uh, well, we're, we're ending something, but in the same sense, we're, we're coming to a completion of a, of a great saga. So Merry Christmas to yourself too and uh, the whole fam. Thank you, sir. Uh, everybody, uh, Merry Christmas. I'll be back on the podcast before, but happy holidays. We uh, will be back next week to recap the finale of Breaking Bad. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll talk soon.